What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Fans Toys Inquisitor or their version of a Masterpiece Scale Scourge. Now this is a pretty anticipated figure for me. I've been looking forward to this guy and there's a couple things you need to do out of box. I did try to show some of them in the unboxing but there's a few other things that you know since I got two copies there's a couple potential things that you could have out of box that you need to fix. So let's start with the backpack. So if you see, there's a tab right here and then a tab right here. That's going to go to this slot and that's going to go to this one. So you can get those plugged in to each other. And then this is going to come down and peg into the top. So go ahead and get that pegged in. It is a tight fit, uh, especially with the paint at first. So it might be, you know, take a little more force than you think. But there it is locked in. So there's your backpack. In the instructions on their video, they showed that these have to be folded out. Mine were already folded in, so I don't think you need to do that. Uh, another thing you need to do is pop the head down. So this is going to slide down. And you think that's in, but actually that's not in. It's got to go a little bit more. It's a really firm push, especially when you first get it. It, it goes further than you think. But now I've got it. It should be flush down there, All right? Uh, and then these are potential issues that you might have. You might have these unplugged, not a big deal, but you can see this back of the uh, calf, that thing is not plugged in, so you can see how it's loose. So to fix that, that's easy. Just open this up, flatten out the knee, straighten up that panel right here, and then bring this back around. Make sure that makes its way into the slot and then plug this in. Give that a firm push. And now that leg is locked in place. And you might have this too. I had this on one of my two copies. Uh, the shoulder was out of place. You can see this one's sticking out. That one's in. So to fix that, you're going to open up this. Open up this panel right here. We're going to slide this up so that this sits inwards. Like that, bring this back down to tab it in place, and then close that back down to hold that panel. Oh, and the toes, which I did mention in the unboxing, but go ahead and fold these out. So depending on whether you had all those issues or not, now we're ready for action with Inquisitor. And my gosh, he looks gorgeous. You got that beautiful metallic blue, darker blue paint, on some spots here and a little bit of a different blue here on the thighs on the inner knees and on the kneecap a metallic red here for the toe toes you have a pink for the nails which is accurate and then metallic red for the eyes and metallic red for the little dot here on the center of his uh, head crest Here's the back. It cleans up really nice. It's all very compact. Once you get it all locked in place, very solid. Nothing goes anywhere. All right, let's go over the articulation. The head is on a rotating swivel, so it gets all the way up to there, really far, down to there. You can rotate it. It does collide here on the sides, but if you lift up on it, you can get it rotated. Um, but the beard it tends to collide with the side. So you have to lift it to go more. The wings are on a pivot joint there. It will pivot upwards. You have to kind of be careful because it can collide with other stuff. You can get this up one click. You can rotate in and out here. You can kind of shroud him if you want. Like that. Get those back down. You can open them up a little bit more to get you know, a bigger look. Nice paint job on the inner inside of the wings too, by the way. Coming down to the shoulders, they rotate around on a friction joint. Out to the side on a ratchet. You have a rotation here at the bicep. Single jointed elbow gets you past 90 degrees. Pretty good motion there. The hands are on a ball joint, so it goes in and out and rotates around. And then the fingers are on three pins. At the nail in the middle and then at the base so you can get it folded all the way down which we'll have to do for transformation anyway and then the thumb is on a ball joint and a pin so you can get that out these are nicely done fingers I was 
interested in how they were going to do it with these pointy nails. We've never had a pointy nailed fans toys. It's always been very square hands. So these are nicely sculpted. Coming out of the waist, you know, waist rotation on a ratchet. That's really nice. Rotates. You have ab crunch on a click. Soft ratchet. One, two. So it gets you down to there. That's pretty good articulation. For the hip skirts, you can get this one out of the way. This one on the side is a little bit hindered. Um, you don't need much of it, but you can get that out of the way. Um, it does tend to collide with the abs, the side of the abs. So you can lift up the ab crunch just one, and then you can open this up a little bit more. Legs will kick up to there on a ratchet. Back to here, it does collide with this back hip skirt piece here. Um, actually, you can go up to there. You can go out to the side, but again, um, just be careful with collision. You have a rotation of thigh around a universal. Double jointed knee gets you the full bend, and it looks pretty darn good. Nice strong ratchets on there. I like the detail here on the inner hip skirt. You got that red, metallic red, which looks good. Coming down the feet, you have ankle tilt all the way out to there. And then toe tilt forward and backward on this joint. And one thing I didn't mention in the unboxing is if you want, you can fold out this piece here, which is meant for alt mode, but it can pretend to be a heel spur. So you don't really need it, but if you wanted it, you can. If you're going to do it, you have to do it on both sides, otherwise he's uneven. So just get that on both sides, and now you got a little bit of extra support. Like I said, you don't really need it, but it does look good, and it is functional. And for his accessories, you do get blaster done in that same metallic blue, baby blue, and then red here on the front. Looks really nice. That'll dive into the hand. And you can actually hold it without even closing the fingers, but to get that look, you can get this around. And it's a good looking gun. And we also get his Target Master here, done in that same kind of baby blue paint, red for the face with yellow eyes, and then gunmetal for the legs. It is a new design for a Target Master, and it does look nice. For articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it gets up and down, rotates all the way around. And you get a little bit of side to side out of that. Shoulders are around on this joint. They can rotate up to here. You have a bend at the elbow, no rotation, all you can rotate here. But elbows go up to there. Nothing at the hands. We have a waist rotation. You move this gun out of the way, you can get a little bit more. You do have an ab crunch here. So you can get down to there. That kind of surprised me. Legs will kick up to there, back to there, out to the side. Rotation at the mid thigh. You have a single jointed knee, but it gets you past 90 degrees. And then for the feet, you have a Ankle tilt goes inwards, a little bit outwards, and nothing forward and backwards. But pretty good articulation for a little guy. Let's get him transformed into his gun mode. So first, to straighten up the arms, lift up on the shoulder, bring it back down, and to separate it from there. This little tab on the inside is going to go into his armpit. Get that plugged in. Same on this one. Leave the head facing downwards. Come to the top here, we're going to lift up on this. We're going to unpeg the bottom here. And it can be a little tricky to get it out. You might need a spudger, but you're going to pull out on this. That's going to rotate all the way around. Make sure the ab crunch is closed. Bring this down. There's two pegs right here. We're going to open these up on the shins. So it looks like that. These are going to fit right here on top of where the shoulder pieces ended up. It actually pegs in under here. There's two slots there. So get that down and pegged into there. 
And then the last step here is the handle. So we're going to come to here on the heels, rotate these in and fold them down, same in this one. And there's your Target Master in gun mode. It is pretty good looking, as good as any other Target Master. But sadly, it doesn't plug in in the hand. So it's actually a different peg. So here are the two guns. You can see it's lower down on the handle and it's a different size. So I really don't know why they designed it like this. You, you can't use it in robot mode just an unfortunate side effect of the way it's designed. I tried combining these, seeing if that worked. I tried, you know, using it upside down. There really is no way to get this pegged in to the hand securely. So unfortunately, I could not find a, a method. Now you could probably cheat and like stick it up here or something. I don't know, but it really doesn't, it doesn't work. So that's unfortunate. He can't hold it. The only image I found from Fans Toys where he was actually using it was him kind of holding it like this between two hands. But I mean, that's kind of cheating. So it really doesn't go in. Now we do get some alternate faces here, but first let's take a look at the stock face. Really nice. It's got three paint colors. You've got the gunmetal for the beard, that lighter blue, and then metallic for the eyes. Very nice. To swap it out, you're just going to pull down on it, and it's on a peg. And then you can take the next face, just push it up into there. And there's kind of an open mouth, slightly open mouth face. Concerned, maybe. There's a grinning or happy face, I guess. There you have the yelling face. That's probably one of my favorites, to be honest. You have the face with the fluid leaking from his eyes from that one scene and that looks really good as well. And for a quick comparison, there it is next to the Fans Toys version of Galvatron and Cyclonus. So we finally have the trio together and it looks really good. It's really a nice completion of the set. Alright, now let's get Inquisitor transformed into his alt mode. And it is a relatively long transformation, but Contrary to what I thought when I first saw the fans video, it's actually not that difficult. There's just a lot of steps involved. Um, at the end, there's some spots that are a little more challenging, but overall, not too bad. Let's start with the legs. So I'll come down to here. I recommend a spudger for this transformation just because it makes things easier. We're going to separate the thigh from here, actually sliding this back. But it's easiest if you just stick a spudger in there and separate the thigh, right? So you slid this back. You're going to rotate this to the outside, and then you're going to slide this forward on here. Right, it's just going to sit like that. Come to the bottom here. We're going to open up this tab right here, which will release all of this. Lift up on the foot. You can fold out this inner blue piece here. Just fold it all the way to the outside, and just leave it right there for now. I'll take care of that a little bit later. We can collapse this down, but don't collapse it all the way down because we have to slide these in. You can't collapse them until you have it folded about halfway in. So fold that in, same with this one. Fold the bottom side in. Just be careful not to collide with anything. Then you can fold that down, fold this blue panel down. And now we can take care of this foot. Fold the toe in, we're gonna rotate the foot 180 degrees. Then we're going to come to the inside, fold out this piece here, which we offered earlier as a heel spur. Unpeg the front of the foot from here. That'll allow you to rotate it 180 degrees. And then that's going to fold underneath like that. Right? And then we have that. And then this is going to rotate down and into the cavity here. Bring this up and then tab that into the side. And then this is going to push down into here and cover up that slot right there. Right, so that's one leg done. Go ahead and do the other side exactly the same. We'll do it off camera and be right back. All right, now that we have both legs configured, we can take care of this crotch area here. So we're gonna open up this panel here. It can be a little tough, so I use a spudger to pop this off. 
you're going to collapse the hips inwards so those triangular pieces meet up. This is going to come down and peg into those two pieces and then this will meet its weight right in the middle and then peg into there. Make sure you leave a little room so it can clear. Okay, so that brings the two thighs together and this should be like this. And you can tab them together right here at the bottom. So I'll get that lined up and give that a squeeze. So that's how we're looking so far. So now we can work on the upper body. Come to the upper chest and make sure the waist swivel is straight and the ab crunch is not crunched. Come to the back, you're going to open up that little panel. And again, you can use a spudger if it helps. But we're going to open up this panel above his shoulder. And that'll actually release this entire backpack. So if you unpeg the backpack from here, you can rotate this whole thing back and kind of get it out of your way. We're going to come to the bottom of the arm, fold out this panel, we're going to push in on this inner ab piece, and that's going to go all the way in. To get it back out, you're going to pull on this and then straighten up that top piece. You're going to take the arm, pull it out, and then bring it all the way down. Push this back in. And that's one arm done. So basically you want it down like this. You want the hand folded up into kind of a cube in that shape and just straightened up and sitting at his side with the elbow straight. So go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. I'll do it off camera. All right, now that we have both arms configured, we're going to take care of the head and the backpack. And notice I didn't close this one yet because we still have something to do there. But go ahead and we're going to unpeg the neck and the head from here. And now that we have this backpack loose, you can take this entire head section. It's on an armature. So you're going to pick up that whole armature. And that is going to accordion back and sit back here for now. Just leave it there for now. And now we can bring the backpack back in. And we can reconnect it. So open this up. Put this, lay that down right in there. This will tab into that, and then this will close and secure the backpack. Go ahead and open up the chest. There's two little spots to put your fingernails or a spudger. Bring this forward. Slide this forward on this slider. Rotate these pieces in. That's what the neck kind of plugs into. Bring this up, and then slide it back down so it sits like that. Okay. Now we can come to the other side. Make sure the arms are straight. The waist is rotated completely straight and the ab crunch is not engaged before we start the next part. All right, so come to the top here. We're going to take this entire backpack piece, just fold it down here for now because we're going to use these two panels here. And by the way, now you can see these are on ratcheted swivels. So you can use that for a little bit of articulation in the robot mode. But go ahead and collapse these down and in on those two armatures so they sit in like that. Come back to the front. We're going to undo all of this. There's a rotator, rotating joint right here. So get that rotated around. I'm going to bring this up and around. And you can kind of see how this is going to make the front of the vehicle mode. So get this all squared away. There we go. And then just give this a squeeze. For this part here, we're going to take this apart. So open up this tab right here. On the other side, unpeg these two right here. And you're going to open these up, open this panel up, and flip these around on that panel. You can flip out these white panels from underneath. Leave these open and that's just gonna sit like that for now. Okay. Rotate these in so they sit kind of opposite of each other. Bring this entire panel back, straighten this up. That panel should fill that gap right there. Bring this down 
and this is going to tab in right here. Try not to engage the uh, ab crunch like I just did. But this is going to fit right in there and squeeze together and should have it nice and flush all the way around. Right. Now we'll take care of this back piece here. So this is actually going to go underneath here. So these two panels are going to meet up. So get this lined up. And get that together. And we can bring this whole panel down and make this a smooth surface. These two panels are going to rotate back. And remember, they're, they're fitting underneath here. So just make sure they're getting in there. And then you're going to tab it in here and here. So there's two spots to get it tabbed in. So get that side one and then the top one. Right. Oh, and we accidentally folded this in. We can open up this panel right here on the inside and leave that down for now. Do the same thing on this one. And go ahead and take these two, plug these together. And we're getting close. So leave a space right there because you're going to take this whole piece and we'll take care of this now. So pull this out, open up this panel here, rotate this 180 degrees, peg this back in. We're going to expand this piece. There's a little tab to grab onto right here. So pull on that. I'll allow you to pull that out, which will allow you to take the head and plug that in flush. Right. This whole panel is going to come down and tab into the top. So it should look like that. And that's why we needed this little gap here was for that to pass through there. Now that that's passed through, we can lift up on these. There's a tab in the middle, so make sure that meets up in the middle and then get this up like that. Right? Do this little squeeze. There's two little panels underneath here, so just grab those and fold those straight back. So it looks like that. Now that we have that, we can push this panel forward. It has to sit in front of those two little tabs there. And it's pegging into the bottom, so it should look like that. And now we're ready to kind of push it together. Make sure the, again, ab crunch is not crunched. Everything's straight. There's two little tabs here and two slots on the bottom, so get those pegged in. So it looks like that. Uh, I didn't finish this part, so go ahead and open up this, fold this back, fold this forward, peg it in, and there's that top piece right there. All right now we will take care of the bottom. Go ahead and take this little tab going into a slot here. Same on this side. Those go in nice and easy. And this is the only panel on the whole thing that I thought was somewhat difficult. So you gotta bring this down, bring this open. And then this, there's one, two, three tabs, and then this has to go underneath here. It can be a little tricky to get them all in at the same time. Make sure this panel is up all the way. Um, but you gotta get this under and this in. But I don't think it's overly difficult, but like I said, this is the only part that I found that's a little bit tough. But go ahead and plug those in. So it should look like that, nice and nice and smooth. And then go ahead and do the same thing on this side as well. All right, and there we have Inquisitor in alt mode. And it really looks good. The paint job is beautiful. Very, very clean. There's not a lot of kibble or like parts sticking out. Pretty clean overall. Here's the back. That looks really purposeful. The engines are nice. You got the metallic red on the front. On the bottom, you do have those three ports here. You can imagine those are boosters or whatever. And then this detail here, which you don't see because they're on the back of the wings in robot mode, but they do look good on the bottom. A little bit of robot parts down here, but overall I'm really impressed how clean this is. You can use some accessories here. So we get a flight stand adapter. There's two slots, two pegs that'll peg into these slots. So get those on the back. 
and then the front will just peg into his crotch here. And that's pretty secure on there. And before we put it on the flight stand, you can plug the Target Master down here in the back of the stand. Only issue is now you can't attach the flight stand. By the way, these are sold separately from Fan Toys. I sold it a while ago. It's probably one of the worst stands I've, I've owned, but um, you can. And I figured out if you use some floor polish or Kiki, you can kind of make that this button stay. And that's the main issue with it. But you can see now I can't do that. So I had to take this off and to plug this in. This is the peg and the standard adapter. You're just going to push it in there and then that peg is going to push all the way in. So make sure you squeeze it on all the way so it's secure. But now you'll notice you can't put this in. You can put this backwards on the bottom like that, but I mean that kind of defeats the purpose of it. It's a little silly that that's the way they went with it, but I do think it looks good on the stand. You can also take the gun, fold up the handle like this. This peg will fit right here on the bottom, so you can just peg that into there. You gotta kinda push it firmly, but that'll fit in there. And there you have all the weapons stored and in flight mode. Pretty nice. All right, and of course we can have the mode with his head exposed, like the toy. So you're gonna come to the back here and you're gonna lift up on this panel. And I recommend a spudger for, for some of this, but basically you're gonna undo everything. I don't know if it's worth it, but basically undo all this, undo all of this. We're going to come to here and basically you're going to fold these down. I'm not going to go all the way, just, just enough to allow this to come through. And now we're going to take this, we're going to unpeg it from here. I'm going to lift up on this panel here and bring this down. And close that up. Rotate this around. Peg it back in to the back of here. And then come down and sit like that. This is just going to sit at an angle like this underneath. So there is a little bit of a gap when you do this. But there is the flying head mode. And for another size comparison, there it is next to the Fan Toys version of Cyclonus and Galvatron in their alt modes. And fits nicely with these two. Galvatron's alt mode is always just, you know, a giant gun, but does look nice with these two. These are the toy versions, so if you wanted to match them with the tune versions, you could do that. So final recommendations on the Fans Toys Inquisitor. I'm going to give this guy a 4 out of 5 and recommend it. I really like how this guy turned out in both the robot mode and the alt mode. Both are really clean. The sculpt is really nice. The paint job is excellent. That's what makes this kind of stand out. Uh, and it goes really well with his counterparts from Fans Toys as well. They're Galvatron and Cyclonus. Overall, the accessories are pretty good. The gun and the alternate hands and then the flight stand adapter, which allows you to show the alt mode in, you know, flight mode. The only accessory that doesn't really work well is this guy. Now, he works well in robot mode. You know, it looks really good and he poses well. But in gun mode, in, in target master mode, he doesn't fit in the hand. And that's the whole point of a target master, right? Is to, is to be turning to the gun. So just... That seems like a weird oversight for Vans Toys to not allow it to fit. But that's really it for today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my comparison with the X Transbots Andras, their version of Scourge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.